We all woke up before the dawn on a quest to capture this morning's elusive light, heading back to the field where just hours before we had watched the moon rise with such delight, only to find that the clouds had descended, turning the morning sky into somber tones of gray. But the Adirondack gods had left us an offering, enough to take one's breath away. It was the gift of fog, and it transforms all it touches from a normal to a mystical place, knowing in only a few brief hours it will have vanished without leaving a trace. Rolling through the valley like gossamer waves, upon a long-forgotten celestial ocean, it appears frozen in time, yet it slowly creeps, a ghostly mist in perpetual motion. We're back up at the top of the hill at Harriet's for your last night, and... <laughs> We got fog. The Adirondack gods deliver. <laughs> we woke up this morning, looked out on the lake, and it looked like uh, there was no fog at all. And we were headed out about an hour's drive out. Time to shoot. B rolling right now. What are you seeing? Oh man, this is just absolutely beautiful. You talk about an absolutely great morning. This life is good. Yes, it is. That morning fog we've been waiting for. Our day was just beginning. When you're in the Adirondacks, you never know what you'll be stopping for. We're here at Mark Kurtz studio, and we, uh, we, we did try to go up a little earlier. We're waiting, uh, waiting on breakfast. How you doing, Mark? We stopped in yesterday and chatted with you for about a half hour. We did take up your offer and try to go up your studio, but it's early here. So we missed you, Mark, but uh, it was nice chatting with you yesterday. We had our uh, friend Peter join us. Wanted to stop by and see if we can catch you again. But anyway, it was good talking with you yesterday. It's good spending some time and giving us some tips. So, uh, take care. Sit this off. Big hands back here with, uh, for the five of us. It's also the coffee is self-served, so that's why I grabbed one as I walked by. Sorry. The story here is that I kindly asked two young ladies if they would mind filming us for B-roll. My only regret is that I didn't get their names or any photos. If by chance the two of you happen to watch this, please leave comments and let us know. Breakfast will be at me next time. told us to get on this road here. So let's do this and then get on the deer, deer pond down here. And while we're at it, we may as well do town line pond. Sounds like a plan.
So you, Bruce? I yeah, I like the purchase here. Thinking, is there is there an opportunity there? But it's not, you know. I know yeah. Mark. Was, maybe he was looking at the same birches. So I might take a little hike up a little bit just to see what's what. Just leaving what are you here. Looking at the birches? Uh, no, I was actually looking at some really fine little detailed uh, moss growing this one tree back. There. Oh, nice. Tea, tea berries. berries. Yeah, right here. Little tea berries. So I can see this. Mark just ate it. Tea berries. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what the other guys are doing here. Sam and Peter were flying their drones, which is what I should have been doing. But I did want to explore and see where this trailhead leads. I did find something a little interesting on this trail here. I might play with it, see if I can make a photograph. We got some boulders that had... So they've fallen down into the trailhead, and I might just use them. They're quite large. Let me flip this around. And I'm thinking about just using these these two boulders to sort of lead in and around that corner. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this. Did you see that? Let me play this clip back at a faster speed. Pay attention to how much this light changes the scene all within seconds. This is why it's so important to be aware of light. I merely bent down to grab my camera and the light dramatically changed in seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 24 to 70. I'm seeing this as a vertical. So we're gonna just try to frame it as a vertical. Light may be a little too harsh, but let's see what we get here. image was a double exposure. One image in focus, the other out of focus, then stacked manually in post. Shooting in midday light is challenging, but there's always something to shoot. I don't think I've ever seen that before, man. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so Mark made a challenge to Sam. It's because you guys don't come prepared for every opportunity. To put on his muck boots. Yes. This could come back to bite me. Look so at good. this. <laughs> Wade into the water, the cold water. Mark, um, just because you have that 45 megapixel monster, can I borrow your camera while I'm doing this? <laughs> you know, the batteries are all dead. Isn't it? <laughs> Uh, I just we realized. Go. Well, at least Mark asked for another Nikon shooter. We do have two Canon guys with us, Pete and Bruce. So, Mark, you think you uh, you think you made a mistake with this challenge? You think it's going to come back at you? And uh... <laughs> I mean, it would be funny as hell if it fell. <laughs> just but saying, I don't right? want him to fall. <laughs> well, but, uh, you know, it would be. <laughs> well, a great B roll. It would be A roll. And he also has his Nikon. Z62 with him. He's in. He's in. I'm missing the footage. Look at this. Oh, he's got the nice, the nice posture. He's got that. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Uh, Is that a up? straight back line? Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. I'm getting a little merger with the. There we go. Is that a, is that a hunter's posture? Is that a photographer posture? Some kind of a squat. I don't know. Like a All right, Bruce, you're up. You're supposed to push him in. Dude, I'm, I'm not going in the water. <laughs> <laughs> the problem here. is, I'm, I'm safe until I get to within arms. Exactly. <laughs> That's what campers trying to say here through all of this. this is, you know, 
He's safe until he gets close. Give me your camera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you see that? Camper, a Nikon guy, offered to hold Sam's Nikon, but Sam chooses to give it to Bruce, a Canon guy. What was he thinking? Never trust a Canon shooter. Hey, Pete, he handed me a Nikon. Yeah, what on... was the first thing I should have done? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You handed oh, a Canon guy and I lost the opportunity. <laughs> handed oh. a Canon guy a Nikon. Woo! <laughs> Sam survives another day. Yes. Yep. And Whoa. there we go. There yeah. it is. I think that could go on the cover of GQ magazine right there, man. That's, that's sexy. <laughs> Four Say hi to mom. The ones that are commenting hi, all mom. The time. Nice. Hi, mom. There you oh, go. Hang on. I'm not a mark, but hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> so that was for you, mom. All right. Don't be oh, mad at me because I didn't call you. I was going to say, you never called. We understand. You never called, son. <laughs> at least you have another mark. <laughs> yeah, good mark. Camper has become like another son of my mom. You'll see to my comments and videos. It's quite a hoot. And maybe someday they'll actually meet. Next destination. So let's get down there and uh, get shooting. We got uh, some dappled light, but in and out of the clouds. So when it's diffused, we'll be able to, you know, manage some of that light a little bit better. Got Mr. Bruce, man. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, hey, hey. what you think, man? Oh, this is a neat shot. I'm trying to get in and see how the drone video is going. Peter and Sam got right to it with the droning. I decided to shoot by land first, then try the sky afterward. Unfortunately, the light was too harsh for any decent photographs, and I was struggling. In fact, I think we all were. It was such a beautiful area with lots of potential, but the light just wasn't right. time to eat, but our selections were limited. Sam found a place called the Shamrock, a burgers and fries place, cheap and good food. But as it turned out, they were closed for the holiday. So I quickly found a place in downtown Saranac Lake, the Fiddlehead Bistro, and off we went. Now, it's not often that I choose where we dine, and things may not go as intended, but that of course depends on your perspective. And you're about to hear just how the gang felt about my choice after reading the menu in the window and debating if we should enter. You couldn't see your car from back there. You just wanted a better part of it. Unbelievable. This is the problem with these young people. They're just so privileged. Great memory. Privilege, man. Did you take a picture of the menu? You gotta get the shot of the menu. I don't want to see those prices again. <laughs> well, that, that hurt, man. Go home and get some food. <laughs> right? I'm so glad, Bruce, yeah. that this was your selection. <laughs> I think it was mine. Well, it was my selection. Yeah. It wasn't yours. I yeah. I never looked at the menu. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so much for burgers and fries tonight, gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the Fiddlehead Bistro. Up to you, Chief. Thanks, sir. Well, this is a good enough time as any. If you're still watching, I'm guessing you're enjoying. Why not smash that subscribe button and give me a like? Thank you. If you haven't stepped out of your box, now's the time. 
because life is all about experiences. And that was the best pan-roasted guinea hen I've ever had. I don't believe anyone ordered the octopus, but I think Camper was thinking about it. Sunset with Mark. Yeah.